Hi everyone, I'm Ashley Jones from Designs and Machine Embroidery, and I'm your host for today. I am filling in for Eileen. She actually was uh, out of town this past weekend, somewhere warm, and uh, wasn't able to get back to Dallas because of some extreme weather. So she will be back with you next week on Thursday. So, but I'm excited to to be here. She has a really awesome topic planned and that's talking about variegated uh, thread and what designs um, and other tips. So I'm excited to share uh, that information with you. So I see a lot of you guys already uh, piping in. And so tell me where you're watching from. Tell me what it's like where you are. I can't lie. I am a uh, warm and sunny in Florida. And so it's really nice here. I know a lot of you guys are dealing with some cold weather. And uh, so I hope that you are sipping something warm and going to enjoy this presentation. So uh, again, we're talking uh, variegated thread. Um, this topic that Eileen planned, um, I think you guys are going to enjoy. But tell me, do you guys like variegated thread? Do you like stitching with it? What's your favorite types of designs uh, to use with uh, your variegated thread? Um, we're going to be sharing a lot of that uh, detail today, but I can't uh, wait to hear from you guys. So yeah, uh, so Becky Ellis, DFW, cold and wet. Yes, and you had some ice, I think, the last few days, which is uh, what affected Eileen's flight. So we've got, um, I see all kinds of states popping in. So I see Kentucky, uh, New York, sunny in Western New York. So I love that. Um, North Carolina, um, we have some people saying love variegated thread. I see um, Lisa from Wisconsin. So Lisa Micah or Mika from uh, Wisconsin. So we've got SoCal. So glad you guys are joining us. Um, and uh, I see some people saying that they like stitching with variegated thread. So, hey, Reen from Embroidery Garden is here visiting with us. So glad that she could join. Um, so welcome, 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 everyone. So I see love variegated thread, love exquisite variegated thread. Um, I definitely agree. We have some really yummy colors that um, are so fun to use. Um, oh, Joanne Banco's with us. So go, uh, let's go sew by Joanne. So hey, Joanne, nice to see you here as well. Um, hi, Lisa from France. So nice to see you, Lisa. Um, Florida, nice and sunny down here, isn't it, uh, Karen? <laughs> love, love our warm summer, uh, a year-round weather for sure. And so, oh, Minnesota looks like it's pretty cold up there. So, okay. So, thank you everybody for joining in. Um, I'm excited to be here. If you have questions along the way, make sure you ask. Now, one thing that I did uh, a couple of weeks ago that I really thought was helpful, we had a lot of chatter going on uh, during the Facebook Live that I did a few weeks ago with Deborah Jones, and um, it was Stabilizer. Um, so, if you have a question, put the question marks in front of, like three question marks in front of. It actually just helps us pick out out of all of the comments uh, so that we can get to your questions. So it's just easier to see. So, okay. So let's talk about uh, variegated thread now that we've had a few minutes for everybody to join in. So these uh, tips and tricks that Eileen planned, I'm going to share uh, with you. Um, it may be a little bit different um, just because you know, there's always a difference between um, uh, Eileen and I. Um, her creativity is beyond belief. So sometimes I don't feel like I'm nearly as creative, but I think I can get you covered. So two types of variegated thread she wanted to share with you and also um, blending variegated threads using solid threads to go with your variegated. And I do have uh, tons of samples. I stitched a couple of designs that she really wanted to share with you guys uh, to show off this technique. Um, and I'll be showing you those as well. So let's talk about those two different types. So contrast 
variegated thread and tone on tone. So when we're talking tone on tone, we're talking uh, a variegated thread. Now, when I say variegated thread, I'm talking about one spool of thread that has multiple colors uh, throughout that one strand. And it changes, you know, as you're stitching, obviously, because of the way it's dyed. So tone on tone would be your uh, one color family. And then it just gets lighter, darker, kind of like a gradient, but not necessarily in a gradient order, depending on the spool. And then contrasting uh, a variegated thread, again, one spool, but you've got contrasting colors next to one another. Now, the contrasting thread I'm going to do first. I really feel like contrasting thread is, um, it shows up really well on your fabrics. The contrasting uh, thread colors um, really offset one another. So you can really see the change in those colors. So today we are going to be talking about our color play thread kits um, because this is the perfect um, item for the topic for today. It has one spool of variegated thread and it has a four spools of solid embroidery thread that are the exact colors in that variegated. So they are the same uh, um, color number from our exquisite line that's actually in that variegated, which I think is super cool because the match is unbelievably perfect. So when you're using uh, variegated thread, there's uh, so many things that you can do with it. But look at just these examples with this color play. So this particular font, and I'll show you uh, that font, it's actually, it looks like it's filled in, which it is, but it's done with a run stitch instead of our traditional fill stitch, um, which would create probably a stripe effect if we used the uh, variegated thread. And I'll show you how to figure all of that out. Um, and then notice that design off to the left has those colors that that are in that kit. So these uh, contrasting colors really do pop against one another um, as it's going through that change of color. So is that cool or what? So I absolutely love this. And here's another set, a couple of sets here. So this, um, two very different uh, sets here. We've got our uh, Carlsbad collection, which has the sunset variegated with neon colors in that, believe it or not. And when I see that every time, it doesn't look like something I'd stitch with. But hey, I think I've got some samples for you that you're going to be like, oh, I've got to have that. So um, and then the Savannah collection is quite the opposite, but still a contrast, but it is soft pastels which is a, a, a beautiful collection as well. So this particular design, Eileen created and sent to me. I did stitch it out for you, so I'll show you this. Um, this is a design that has a font that has multiple colors in the font, which is gorgeous. So it was the perfect pairing uh, with the color play kit because it had the solid colors and this font that she used is called a color play font. It's actually built into one of our software programs. And she created that run stitch heart so that you could really see the difference uh, um, it makes to use a variegated thread instead of just that run stitch. So I'm going to go over to my camera. Let me show you some samples of the contrast and then we'll go over to the uh, variegated are the tone on tone um, next. So I'm starting with this uh, here. Um, this is a test stitch out that I like to do personally because variegated thread, when you look at it on the spool, I mean, look how gorgeous, right? But you, you don't necessarily know how it's going to look in a design. Now, we have in embroidery three different stitch types. We have fill stitches, we have satin stitches, and we have run stitches. So each one of those creates a completely different look with a variegated thread. So I have this little design that I actually created in my software. And I have each one of my colors um, from my medley collection stitched so that I can look at this and see what it's going to look like in the different uh, types of stitches. So notice here in the fill stitch, um, I get that stripe look. Well, fill stitches, um, normally designs, you know, your fill stitches are going all different directions, especially if you have multiple fill stitches in one uh, design. And uh, I just change the direction. So because sometimes our fill stitches are going horizontal, sometimes they're going diagonal, and so and sometimes they're going vertical. So when you change the direction, you can see how it's stitching. So my uh, the way that my fill stitch 
stitches out, I get that different pattern here. Now with the satin stitch, you can see that uh, as it goes around, I get that stripe effect. Now to me, the satin stitch is a fantastic way to see the exact colors that are in uh, these variegated threads. Um, but really, I can't lie. I love doing run stitches with variegated thread because you don't um, get that stripe effect um, depending on the design. Now this is a run stitch fill, but it goes in a pattern that you can see that even in this run stitch, I get that, uh, that pattern look. So this is one of your contrast threads and we're gonna be talking about tone on tone. You can see that this is uh, all shades of blue uh, for the tone on tone to give you that look. But I love having these stitched, stitched out. So that's uh, one tip that I can give you. When you're selecting your variegated thread colors, take a look here. Like I will take uh, quite a bit off of the spool and I will pile it on top of the fabric that I plan to use so I can kind of see what it looks like because some variegated thread, um, you know, might have the exact same color. So then spots of your design would not show up if you've got the same color thread as you do on your fabric. So that's just something that I like to do there. So let me uh, slide this out of the way and let's see uh, some different things here um, that I've created with some of these contrast packs. Um, so now the contrast uh, colors, they, I think they, like I said, they really do pop. Like this is the, the design that Eileen uh, created, which I think is gorgeous. Um, she is so creative. So this is a font that's in our Word Art and Stitches called the Taj Mahal. It's a multicolor font um, that uses, you know, your combination of colors, your favorite colors. So what we did here is we used um, the variegated thread in the run stitch heart. And this particular font is called our color play font. And it's all run stitches. And it's specifically digitized to work with variegated thread. And you're going to see it several times here coming up. Um, but again, these uh, threads, because this is run stitch, it was perfect for the variegated. Now, if we had used the variegated in the satin areas, we would have gotten that stripe effect that we saw in my sample. So the colors that come in our kit, so color play kit uh, looks like this. So you get the one variegated and the four colors that are in the variegated spool there. And you can see, I know my light's hitting it there, but these are five spools of thread, one variegated, and the four uh, exquisite solid colors. This is all embroidery thread, so you can use it in your embroidery designs, but I don't know about you, but there's sometimes I actually use my embroidery thread for my sewing projects. I love putting my variegated thread for a, uh, a serger stitch, especially if I'm doing like a rolled hem. It's gorgeous on the edge of a napkin too. So color play, uh, this is all... Um, uh, embroidery thread, but you can see we've got it's for embroidery sewing and quilting. Um, it's polyester, 100% polyester. It's a 40 weight thread. And these are your uh, normal thousand meter spools that you are accustomed to getting. So that's what it looks like. So in this particular design, we use the variegated where we thought appropriate here. And then the solid colors actually make up the coordinating letters of this cute little design here. So isn't that perfect? And if you had asked me if I would ever be stitching with a fluorescent thread, I probably would have told you um, that that's a crazy idea, that fluorescents are not my thing. But I have to say, out of all the stitching that I have done over the years, that this turns out to be one of my favorite colors. And I will show you why. It is so gorgeous on a variety of different things. And when you're choosing the right color, oh my gosh, it really pops. So let me show you a couple of other examples here. So take a look. This is actually um, one of my favorites, this one and this one here. So this is just a uh, napkin that I did that color play font on. This is kind of a, uh, you know, it's a purple color. I know that sometimes color kind of changes whenever you uh, are on the camera. But I wanted to show you when I was selecting this, I was worried that I would not be able to pick up uh, this color that's, you know, a, a really darker pink color, um, like a rose color. And so what I like to do is I like to put my actual thread 
just piled up on the color that I'll be stitching on so that I can kind of tell if it's going to work. So that's one tip uh, when picking not just variegated thread, but it certainly works great with your, uh, your regular embroidery thread as well. But take a look at this example here. So this little clutch, I actually uh, quilted these colors. Um, these colors that I've chosen are uh, the solids of this set. Um, and then this uh, monogram is uh, this color here. Um, so this beautiful fluorescent color. But look at the back of my clutch. Look at that variegated thread in the quilting. I love quilting with that sunset variegated. So this is the Carlsbad collection and this is the sunset variegated. But isn't that gorgeous? I mean, it has that bold green, the orange that changes into that darker orange and that uh, that deep rose color there. So I love doing this um, uh, color, believe it or not. So what do you guys think? Do you think fluorescent is a little uh, a little out of your league? But now here, take a look at this. So this is just a tote bag that I like to throw some supplies in if I'm going to a class. And I put a, uh, a quilt block on here in uh, heat transfer vinyl. And I just created this stipple design uh, and just stitched over top of it with my embroidery machine uh, to make it look like it was a quilted block. And I used that uh, beautiful uh, sunset variegated there too. So just some other things that you can do. So let me show you another uh, couple of contrast uh, examples um, and see what you guys think. I see some of you guys are asking some questions. So I see Regina said, um, is there uh, a video that shows how to make the clutch. So um, Eileen, I think, has stitched out a couple of our clutch designs on Facebook Live. So if you search the past videos, you probably will find some details. It may be the um, stitch swag clutch that she did or either the clutch from um, her... Uh, handbag book that she did with Nancy, but the process is exactly the same. So the embroidery machine stitches the pattern um, and then you actually sew the two pieces um, and the lining together on your sewing machine. And the instructions are really good as well. So um, any of our clutches come with the instructions. Now the instructions for the clutch, I actually just took the, pr the pattern and I added this quilting and I added the piecing. So if you have a, a maybe a, a block that's a, a random block that didn't fit into a quilt or something. Um, it makes a great clutch frame. And that's uh, what I used here was just a quilt block. So, but instructions, yes, um, are great. The written instructions are out there. Um, but you can also find, she's uh, talked about these clutches in the past too on uh, Facebook Live. So, so check that out too. Now, this example, I'm having to turn around here and grab stuff. I didn't have enough room. <laughs> But look at this uh, bow, bow. So this is freestanding lace um, that I stitched this uh, bow, this three-dimensional bow here. And I use this beautiful set that is a, a gorgeous set of pastels. Um, so I'll bring this up and maybe the, the camera will pick up that color change there. Isn't that beautiful? And so these are fantastic uh, a contrast that's very, very soft. So you can use your variegated thread and your freestanding lace if you want. Um, so it works great. Freestanding lace uh, is a run stitch a lot of times to create that grid. So it actually does really good for your freestanding lace. Um, and I've got a couple of other examples uh, that I'll show you here too coming up. Um, another contrasting uh, um, set is this uh, collection here. This collection is this beautiful color here. And you can see the colors that are included, an aqua, a mint, green, a pink, and this beautiful blue. So nice contrast in these examples here. And so what I did here to incorporate uh, some solids with my variegated thread is I used that color play font that is a run stitch font. And the frame that I put around the font, you can see are those matching co colors. So um, I love incorporating those into um, uh, different projects because a lot of variegated, it well, it might be too much. <laughs> So, uh, so now let's talk about um, a couple of tips and the tone on tone. Uh, 
So now I, I showed you this already. So this, um, what I use in my sample, so you could actually do this with a design that you maybe have on hand. So I created this in my software, but you can certainly do this. Choose a design that's just a fill stitch, choose one that has satin stitch, and then choose uh, something that's a run stitch. And that's usually like a quilted design or even a red work. Be careful with the red work though, because sometimes red work um, goes uh, over itself in certain areas. It might be two ply or it might be uh, a bean. Bean would be better, but two ply generally runs out and then runs back. So then your colors, when they're coming back to meet one another, they're not lining up. So then two run stitches side by side uh, would have possibly uh, your contrasting colors. So just be um, cognizant of that. Um, but here's another tip. So when I was stitching out uh, some samples uh, to show you, and I'll show you this one that's coming up, I was using the uh, variegated that is a, um, a green tone on tone. Well, I did not want the font to start with this light color. So what I did is I just pulled the thread until I saw the dark color that I wanted to start my font with. So when you are stitching out your design, you can't predict everything that's going to happen, but you certainly could um, adjust that starting point if you wanted that darker color. Now, the distance of uh, the color, um, if you really wanted to get technical, you could pull out your thread and measure that distance to, to know um, when it's going to change color. But um, that is a little difficult, especially with our collection, because it's it's more random. It's not an exact number every single time, So, which is uh, something that we like about our variegated. Okay, so now the tone on tone colors, um, these are some examples of the tone on tone. So I'm going to show you some of these here uh, coming up in just uh, um, when I go back under my camera. And so these are uh, same color family, but uh, kind of a, a gradient kind of selection of colors, some of them. Uh, but to me, tone on tone, it, it blends more. So if you're doing quilting, on a quilt that has, you know, busy fabric that has a bunch of different colors, a tone on tone variegated would really blend. And I have an example of that that I'll show you. And look at this gorgeous uh, design here that Eileen stitched out. I just, uh, to me, run stitches, they're my absolute favorite. I really love because it just shows that change in color in the thread. And this is another example that she created with that same uh, Taj Mahal font that I absolutely love. There's so many uses of this. So I'll show you that uh, here under the camera as well. Uh-oh, just dropped one of my spools there. Um, so let's uh, take a look at this example and talk about uh, um, Eileen's choices of colors here. So now notice that our colors that we have, this is actually the blue uh, Nashville variegated color that we have. I'm going to grab that spool. So it is tone on tone for our blues. And you can see those blue colors here uh, that I have. So let's take a look at those. Beautiful, right? Um, and again, I, you know, uh, I like to pile this up, see what it's going to look like. And uh, you can tell what you're going to, uh, what you're going to expect there. And so um, for this collection, you can see we all have blues, but she added this beautiful gold color as a pop of color. And so I love uh, that that case. So then it's not just all these blues. So I really love that. So um, Marianne said um, she agrees with Margie. I'll have to go back and look for, for Margie. Oh, so Margie says, what font is that? Um, and so uh, that font, this particular one that's colorful is called the Taj Mahal font. The Taj Mahal font is built into Dimes Word Art and Stitches. So if you own that program, you actually have that font. And notice that every letter has different types of stitching. In fact, I've got another example here that I'll show you. So my sign here that says create, you can see that every letter has a different uh, um, stitch pattern. Um, and you can see that uh, if you're using two of the same letter, you're getting that same stitch pattern there. But that is the Taj Mahal font that's built into our word art and stitches. So Hopefully that's the font that you're talking about. If it's the other font, uh, that is called Color Play. If you were actually asking about this font, it's called Color Play, and that is also in 
word art and stitches. So, and I'll, I can head over there and show you guys that if anybody is interested, but uh, I love this. I love how she added that pop of color. So if you're using your color play set, uh, to create your design, to make sure that you all coordinate. You do not have to stick to just those colors. Add those coordinating colors. And in fact, um, with the home, uh, sweet home that we saw earlier, we also have a pop of color here, but it's very minimal. So this blue is not part of this uh, colorway. So add uh, your colors that work. You're not, uh, you know, stuck to those same exact colors. So I love that. What do you guys think about that? Isn't that beautiful? So that font is phenomenal. It is one of my absolute uh, favorites. So, um, and then uh, Harriet Ann Palmer says, uh, was the bow done with mylar or metallic thread? It looks glittery. It sure does, uh, uh, Harriet Ann. This was actually using mylar underneath and i'm so glad you can see the sparkle sometimes on the camera you know it's so hard to show that shine but this was used uh this was using the variegated thread um here our number 104 and it is part of a color pay play pack as well um and i just use that one color and this is actually a cut file uh that that makes a paper uh bow and so i just instead of paper turned it into uh, freestanding lace using uh, my dime software. But that sparkle is Mylar. Good catch. Good catch on that. Okay. And so then um, Mary, hey, Mary, had uh, said, when I created the freestanding lace, did I put the variegated in the bobbin um, as well? So for this particular one, I did not. So let me show you that. So because the bow um, is uh, not really visible on the back and this particular color of thread is very light, I left my white bobbin and notice that you can't even see it. You can't even tell. If this would have been one of the darker colors, I probably would have definitely um, either put the variegated in the bobbin or one of those uh, coordinating colors for sure. Um, but I knew that with this white, um, and this is so uh, light of a color that it wouldn't be as noticeable. So I just left that white bobbin. That's a great question. So, um, and then Ann Dilbeck says, can I buy that font? So if you're referring to this font, that's our Taj Mahal. It is not for sale separately. It is part of our word art and stitches. Uh, um, and that's a great question. So, um, and then the bow pattern. So Kathy, hey, Kathy, I see her over on our user group often. So Kathy um, asked about the bow pattern and Kathy, that is an SVG cut file um, that if you searched freestanding uh, or, or a bow or a paper bow or pay SVG bow, you'll get something that's probably three parts. So this was the base, um, the part of the bow that curls under and the center part here. It's an SVG file that I then converted to freestanding lace. So how cool is that, right? Um, okay, so more on the, the tone on tone here. Um, and so let me show you some other examples that I've got here. Now, this Nashville collection, that's the blue uh, um, variegated uh, set, the color play set is called Nashville. Um, and this particular variegated is called the denim blue. So the each thread has a color name and uh, the set has a color name. Um, so here's a couple of other things here. So look at how cute is this. So that color play font um, with one of those colors in the set that I chose for this particular design um, and also for this one. So remember we talk about those tone on tones, they blend. So for this particular example, I really love the, the fabric and I wanted that uh, large floral print to really shine. So I used the denim blues variegated thread because I knew that it would blend with all of those color changes that I had going on. And I think it did a great job. Isn't that beautiful? So really, depending on the look that you're going for, if I really wanted that quilting to show, I would have chosen, you know, something that's more of a contrast to, to pick up on um, the, the that color. And so now look at some other, since you guys like the freestanding lace, take a look at this. So um, freestanding lace earrings with variegated thread. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? 
So this blue is one of my uh, favorite colors. So these uh, earrings um, are, um, again, freestanding lace. One color of thread creates that beautiful uh, color um, of those earrings. And can you imagine just having a solid blue shirt on the blue that would, this would pick up any color of blue and would just look gorgeous, um, with that, that solid color. So I love that doing the freestanding lace. Um, and so, uh, Carol says, can, uh, we buy these sample designs? So these are designs, uh, Carol, that either Eileen or I created in our software, um, or, uh, they are, um, are freestanding lace designs. These designs are came from one of our uh, software as well, the My Lace Maker. And then I created that bow um, as well. And the fonts come from one of our design collections. So, uh, or one of our, um, I'm sorry, the our software. So that, that uh, is from that collection. So now here's a design collection that we do have also created by Eileen, but she does sell it. So look at all these little jackets. These are freestanding lace jackets. Now let's look at some of these colors. I love <laughs> the way these stitched out. Um, and so we've got the uh, the blue, the green. This is a um, uh, like browns and golds, very fall. Um, and then those beautiful pinks there as well. Um, again, this is freestanding lace. Now these are from Eileen's uh, uh, charm collection. They're called Lace Charms. And uh, those, uh, it has this little jacket in there and it literally is just stitched out in different colors. So isn't that cute? Um, I just absolutely love that. Um, okay, so another uh, great set of samples there. So let me show you um, a couple of other things. So here I've got two. These were the, the last two things that I uh, created. So now what about, we talked about how um, variegated looks with a fill stitch, run stitch, and a satin stitch, but what about cross stitch? So does, does anybody out there have cross stitch designs that uh, you can stitch with your embroidery machine? So our perfect embroidery pro can create a cross stitch. Look at the variation in that color. That heart is cross stitch, all just one thread color. And then I put the text in the solid color. Now, looking back, do you ever stitch anything and wish you had... <laughs> tested or uh, done something different. So in uh, the future, I would definitely move that B mind down uh, either above or below um, because as it went over an area that had that same color thread, I don't think you notice the letters as much, you know, and really the letters are what, uh, you know, in the foreground is what we want to focus on for sure. But now this one here, take a look at this. Now, this is a font that I also have in my software that has a two colors to it. Um, this font, I think it's called the August font in our Perfect Embroidery Pro and our Word Art and Stitches. I just use one color as that variegated and look at that kind of candy cane effect I got there um, with that color. I love that. And then I just created this heart with the, the uh, four different colors that coordinate with this set. So, uh, but just uh, cute little different things that you can do there. So uh, let's see if we have any other questions there. So um, Ellen says, how do you convert freestanding lace? Uh, uh, how do you convert to a freestanding lace? file. So Ellen, we have a software program called My Lace Maker that uh, will allow me to take uh, an SVG file like I did here and uh, just with a couple of clicks, turn that into freestanding lace. So that was done with one of our programs. So, um, and then uh, she says, I have DG Studio 3 um, till I get something else to convert files, but I don't know freestanding lace. So, uh, so yeah, freestanding lace, um, that program does all the work for you to digitize freestanding lace. is not the easiest thing ever because you have to make 100% sure that all your stitches uh, connect. So that's nice to have that do all of the work for you. Um, okay, so let me just scroll back here and see. So those earrings are gorgeous. Um, and I agree. So they would definitely go with anything uh, denim. So thank you for joining. So creative appliques, that's uh, Dawn, most likely. Thanks for joining, Dawn. Joining Dawn. I love uh, your designs too. Um, and so let's see what else we've got. Um, 60 weight in the bobbin. So did I use 60 weight in the bobbin? So with my freestanding lace, if 
I used um, my regular bobbin that I use for embroidery. It most likely is a 60 weight. Um, I did not change that. If I have the choice, if I have a matching color in 60 weight, then I do uh, like to use that. But sometimes we don't have that exact color. So doing 40 weight on the top and the bottom um, in my freestanding lace, I'll do that as well and don't have any issues. So uh, Mary said, Mary Ann said, um, are there any other color play fonts beside that one? Well, Marianne, I'm glad you asked. And so I actually have a little um, example that I will show you that'll kind of give you an idea. So in Word Art and Stitches, there are quite a few fonts that will work with uh, um, variegated thread. Um, I like to use run stitch fonts. If you choose any font, um, it's going to, um, uh, you know, if it's a regular satin stitch font, remember our example, it's going to look stripe. So if you like that look, then certainly. But in Word Art and Stitches, um, we actually have these fonts here that are run stitch. So these three fonts here are, are large. So they're more of like a monogram. But we do have just a regular run stitch uh, script. And I think actually, that's part of our luxury collection, if I remember correctly. Um, and then the waffle is built into uh, both Perfect Embroidery Pro and Word Art and Stitches. But now look, this is why you should test. So now I originally was going to use that denim blue color that I used in my uh, earrings here in this waffle. But I was like, oh no, at the last minute I changed to that uh, uh, Rio collection that has that variegated with a huge contrast. But now when you look at that font, it's hard to read because of that variation in color. This is a fill stitch font. I'll show you that on the screen here in a moment. But it actually um, is specifically digitized for a variegated thread so that you don't get that stripe effect. But when I stitch this out and I use that contrasting color, I don't like it. I don't think it's as visible and your text should always be legible. When you're putting your uh, text on your embroidery, I think that, you know, we, we make those uh, text and the words and the sayings for a reason. So definitely want them to be legible. And that wasn't exactly the best choice of thread. So I was going to redo it, but then I was like, eh, I think that's a good thing to point out. Um, and then this is the color play font that's built in. Uh, this sketchbook font here is all run stitches. That's part of word art and stitches as well. Um, and then these three run stitch fonts here, but look at the difference. So this is a beautiful um, tone on tone variegated thread. This one more of a contrast. I think this font would have looked good with either the contrast or the tone on tone. Um, now this one, look at how it's stitched out. This is all run stitch, but, but because of where it stops, starts and and finishes let me get my little pointer here um you can see that the lighter colors are on the bottom and the darker colors on the top there and uh it's just the it's the way that the fonts digitize and the way it's run um and that happens with your variegated thread you don't always know where it's going to land um and so but that those collections are built into to our software program but run cinches are fantastic for um, uh, your variegated thread, but that doesn't mean that you couldn't put it in your satin stitches. Remember, let's look at this. If you were to use one of your fonts uh, that you normally stitch, it would come out with probably this stripe effect here because of the satin stitches. But does that is that bad? I don't think it is. I think it depends on the color uh, look that you're going for. So really you can choose, you know, anything that you, you'd you like there. So um, so Kathy said, uh, what is the large C? That's called Cosmic, I think. Kathy, I'll look when I head over there um, in into um, the software. And then uh, Laura says, uh, how do you tell what type of font it is in PEP? So I'll show you that over there too. So you can, most of the fonts are your satin stitch fonts. And so I'll definitely uh, show you that when I go over there too. If I forget, make sure you ask again. <laughs> so Carolyn, hey, Carolyn. So she says, do you have any other ways to use variegated thread besides letters? Oh, yes, absolutely. And so most of it I stitched out just because it, um, it shows the variation in the color, but quilting designs like I had on the back of my little clutch there, wherever it went, I have tossed things and and they've gone away. Here we go. So variegated thread uh, looks great in a quilting design. 
And we have tons of embroidery uh, designs for quilting. Tons of designers out there use those. Also, um, I love to use it in my serger uh, for doing a uh, rolled hem. Um, variegated thread is also good in um, some of your regular embroidery designs. So just these are good examples uh, to show what you can expect with a design. So using the uh, um, this type of layout to kind of figure out what it's going to look like. So certainly one of the things that I love, there actually is a brown, I don't have it right here in front of me, that is kind of a very soft uh, change of kind of some um, uh, tans and creams. Looks really good for animal fur. So if you're stitching something that's realistic, that looks like animal fur, that's a great option uh, for that as well. But absolutely, you're not just limited to letters. And honestly, I didn't even notice that I had done that. So, <laughs> so next time I'll make sure that I have uh, a little bit more than uh, just the letters on there. So let me go back to uh, our slideshow here. So the color play is our special uh, for today. So any color, any set you can get for 27 75. Um, and if you spend over 75, you'll get free shipping with the free ship code, uh, 25 ships free. But before we stop there, let me head over to the software and show you a few other tips. Um, now you don't have to have, uh, um, embroidery software for this. Anybody that knows me knows I love my embroidery software. So I use it for nearly everything, uh, designing wise. And so I use it in this manner. So I just created these rectangles, um, so that I can see exactly what it's going to look like. Now, in any dime software, we actually have the medley color palette. So from my color palette list here, if I go and look at the exquisite medley, it has all of my colors so that I can select those colors. So right now, um, the um, I've got these five colors here and I'm actually about to change. So let's see what um, this, so this really pastel colors here, this is the one that I think really looks gorgeous for um, like a fur on a light colored animal. Look at that. It's very subtle in its changes, but look in the run stitch here. You just very barely notice a, a, a variation in the color. So, um, so that's one thing that you can do there. I see a couple of questions popping up. So let's see what we've got. So can you use variegated thread in the serger with the wave stitch? Oh, Katie, I think that would be gorgeous. So if any of you are not familiar, the wave stitch is a specific stitch to um, a baby lock serger that the stitch goes from the front to the back. Um, it's really uh, gorgeous, but that would be um, a beautiful use of your variegated thread too. So um, we got a Facebook user that says, uh, oh my, what's the name of that software? So the one that I am using, the one that the fonts came from is our Word Art and Stitches. Um, and so that that software is where all of the lettering came from. Um, and now for me, creating these shapes with the fill stitches, I use my Perfect Embroidery Pro um, to create that. So, um, but let's take a, a look at some of these other uh, questions here. So the wave stitch. So I saw a few more pop up here. Oh, Kathy, she, you said, what was the name of that large C? So let's take a look at that. I'm going to head over to my run stitch fonts here. And so take a look. So that waffle color, um, I'm going to zoom into that. That's a built-in font. You can see that variation. Hey, it looks fine on the screen, but of course i couldn't see it that well when I got it stitched out. So let's uh, change that and see, you know, if we had used, say, that denim blues or one of the these colors that have a, a tone on tone, I think it probably would have been more legible, don't you think? So, um, but that's how we learn, right? That's how we learn to, um, let's choose another, uh, this one here, the citrus um, is the one that I had on that run stitch font. So, so I think that's more legible. Um, for uh, um, stitching out in a variegated thread. But that particular font is meant to be used with a variegated thread. Now, uh, I'm going to click on this one, um, and it is called Cosmic Swirl. If I click uh, here, I can see that it's Cosmic Swirl. And because it's in red, I know that it comes from our Word Art and Stitches um, as well. So um, how do you tell which font type um, is in PEP? And so let's take a look at that one right now. So since we have our font collection open, um, when I click on them, most all of them are satin stitches. But if 
if they are run, it would say run after it. And that's kind of cut off. But when I hover over, it'll say run. Um, and so you can see the satin uh, color. There's that August font that I used. That was the two color font. I'll show you uh, that over on another screen. But it'll tell you a little bit about the font, you know, in the name of it. So now this is a, a run stitch font. You can kind of tell when you look. But when you select it, you'll also know. But this uh, Cosmic Swirl for the C, um, that uh, is one of the fonts. This is another one of the run fonts uh, built in. Both of those are run. The color play um, is built into Word, Art, and Stitches. It's red, so that's how I know it's part of Word, Art, and Stitches. Um, the yellow are part of Word Art and Perfect Embroidery Pro. The purple are part of our luxury font collection. So that's the beauty of owning several pieces of Dime software is they all work together. But I love how I can change uh, my variegated thread on the screen and it kind of gives me an idea of what it's going to look like in that particular uh, font. So that's a really easy way to do it. You could always stitch out an example um, and uh, put that with your variegated thread. So put it with your spool. So there was our other couple of options. And then this one here. So the run stitch uh, uh, or the not the run stitch, the cross stitch. This is actually I'm going to put it in a solid color so you could see. Um, so that actually made a really cool uh, variegated effect, too. So when I change it to variegated, you can kind of see there. Isn't that cool? Um, but this font here was the other one that I used. Um, if you have a font, you don't have to have our program. But if you have a font in your program that has a, um, a, a two color, um, that's what I did here. So I used a variegated for this color um, and then a, a solid color for that part of the font. So let me change this uh, variegated here to a solid color so you can see what this font would look like normally. So let's put a completely contrasting color. So this is a two color font um, and I just stitched uh, this color here with the variegated instead of a solid color to get that look. So what do you think? Isn't that cool? So, um, and then here's another example. Whenever we talked about the, the Facebook user that asked about, can you use things that are not fonts? But here I have um, a um, heart that has just some kind of sketch run stitches in there to kind of get that effect. Um, and this one, um, that is a, um, a heart that has a um, like our projection kind of uh, stitch to it. So yeah, you didn't have to be fonts. It was just a really good example of what we were talking about to uh, today. So so hopefully that will uh, help you and kind of get your creative juices flowing. So let's see if we have any uh, last questions um, here. So um, Mary says, can you use a size 14 needle in a broidery machine? So yes, you can. A 9014, you can use, but normally you're going to choose your needle size based on uh, the fabric that you're stitching on, Mary. And so if you're stitching on a really heavy fabric, then you might need a needle that's a size 14. But if you're stitching on something that is thinner, um, I think the most commonly used size embroidery needle for me anyway is a 7511 or even an 80. Um, and so I can get away with with that uh, for most everything that I embroider. So uh, Vicky says, I do have purple fonts in Word Art and Stitches, so maybe I have the luxury add-on. So Vicky, that means you do have the luxury add-on. So the luxury font collection was just a font collection that uh, we have that you can add more fonts to any dime program if you want. So, um, and then Julie, hey, Julie. Um, I remember Julie from a, a, a vintage event that I did a long time ago. So Julie, the two color font be mine, that is called August. And that's in your Perfect Embroidery Pro or in your uh, Word Art and Stitches. So let me just double check it over here. Yes, it's called August. Um, that is the, the font built in Perfect Embroidery Pro word art and stitches so isn't that cute so and jennifer says uh colors of the font so um i'm assuming she says she likes that and i agree i love that too um, and we saw Vicky, she says she has the add on. So any other uh, questions, make sure that you uh, add those before we go. Uh, can you do a search for your fonts for run? So when you select, um, if we can show my software screen again, 
Um, when you select your font, let me remove that uh, question. So Facebook user says, can you search your fonts? And the answer is yes. In any of our Dime software that has uh, fonts uh, built in, you can open up your catalog. The way you open your catalog is by clicking here and uh, you would just put in the um, the find box here. If you put run and run is part of the name and you press the down arrow, it'll go to every option that has run in the name. So yes, you can search for run as well. Um, so that's actually a great question. So a good way to use your, your software too. And then um, somebody uh, says, so that's Mary. She says, uh, can you use a 16 needle uh, embroidery machine. So I think she was asking, yes, you absolutely uh, can. Oh, oh yeah, size 16. So in the in the needle of the embroidery machine. So a 16, I don't know that I've ever uh, used that in an embroidery needle size. We've got some really um, uh, amazing embroiderers here. So somebody pipe up and say, have you ever used a size 16 in your embroidery machine? That's a pretty big needle for sure. And again, what I would say is your needle is um, um, uh, selected based on your fabric. So if you have a really thick fabric, then you um, need a, a, a larger needle. So hopefully that helps you. Okay. So don't forget that special on the color play, but I also have a uh, another thing to show you. You guys know we do our on the house design, right? And so that's coming up next. But before we talk about that, if you like this Facebook Live and you want to make sure you're notified when we have a live, make sure that you like us on Facebook or uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel or both. And so take a look at this video of how you would do that. We want to make sure you are being notified every time we go live on Thursdays at 1 p.m. And here's a quick tutorial on how you can set up your live notifications. First, on your home page, click on the search button. Look for us. Click on the three little dots on our page. A pop-up will appear. Select on manage follow settings. Click on live videos and enable notifications. Make sure they're all set to all. Now you're all set. I love that. Okay, I see a couple of more things popping up before we go to our on the house design. Um, and so uh, Sandy Martinez says, show us your earrings. So the earrings that I'm wearing are uh, from our freestanding lace uh, collection by Eileen Roach. So if you're over there on DZGNS, um, you can check those out. So when my, my camera comes back up, I'll show you that big uh, in just a moment. There we go. So those are freestanding lace earrings. I thought the red was nice since we're approaching uh, Valentine's Day. So take a look. There's actually two collections that Eileen created for jewelry. There's the uh, uh, just earrings and then there's freestanding lace jewelry. And so take a look. There's images whenever you look over there. So you'll see uh, which ones you like. There's multiple choices. And so I love those. And then Julie Ford says, can she watch uh, this again? And yes, Julie, you absolutely can. Um, our Facebook lives are always posted. You can actually find them under the, the uh, live videos on the YouTube channel or on Facebook live. I think there's a little header called videos or lives. I think it is. Click on that and you'll find that over there. And then both Joanne and Dawn, which are um, embroidery experts as well, said that they've never used a 16 needle. Um, big needles tend to leave bigger holes. And I totally agree. Uh, with you, Joanne. And I did see that uh, Dawn from Creative Applique said that she'd never used a 16. She usually uses a 7511. So, um, and those ladies, like I said, embroidery experts. So I would trust anything that they told me um, about embroidery, probably about anything else too. So, <laughs> and then Amy Harris says, is a luxury thing um, available in the Dime software? Because I have several. So um, the luxury font is a collection of, of just embroidery fonts that you can uh, purchase and adds to your Dime software. But I'll give you a secret. If you don't have a Dime program, but you love those luxury fonts, you could see those over there on DZGNS. Um, they actually install inside of our free program. So you'd be able to use those luxury fonts. And it's it gives you that uh, collection, a really nice collection of fonts as well. So, um, and then uh, what do we 
we got here? Facebook user says, uh, I am so new to this where to start. Well, I would tell you, get a design, your whatever design you want to start with, choose it. Um, and then just put it on, say a scrap of fabric. It doesn't even have to be anything special, but I tell you, once you start, um, you're going to be hooked and put a variegated thread in there. Just get a, it, get the look of it. And so just start with something that you have. You don't necessarily have to have, uh, anything special. So Awesome. Okay, so now let's talk about that free design from On the House. You guys know that Dime has a program where we give away a frequently a weekly design for free, and every month Eileen turns it into a project. Now these are available for a limited time, so don't forget to get them. At the end of the year, they go away because we start all over. Um, and so with those, um, you want to post your project on social media. Use the hashtag Dime So Along or on the house um, or uh, exquisite thread or put them all on there so we can find your projects. We love to share them. The free designs are at dzgns.com. If you head over there forward slash on the house will get you to all that we have. So we are uh, just over a month in. So you'll get to choose from those. Now, last week, since it was the last week of January, Eileen um, created this cute little mug rug. It's done in the hoop. It's so adorable. That project is over there as well. So make sure that you haven't grabbed the others to make sure that you get those as well. So don't forget this week, look at this gorgeous hummingbird. Beautiful. All satin stitches to make that a design. So think about it. If you're using your variegated thread, remember what we saw, you're probably going to get that stripe. But we have selected this gorgeous color palette for this particular design. So I love that. Now, make sure you get that while uh, uh, it's available. So go over there, dzgns.com forward slash on the house, and you can download all those free signs. Now, this is actually very appropriate for today. So now I am here for Eileen because uh, she was not able to get home due to the weather um, from her destination. She was in a nice, warm, sunny place. So don't worry about her. Don't feel bad for her. She was able to extend and, and uh, enjoy the warm and the sunshine. But she will be back with you next week um, on Thursday, normal time, same uh, time, same place, same channel. But we are starting something new next week that I wanted to share with you. And especially since quite a few of you guys had questions about the software. So we are going to start doing a Facebook Live on the first and the third Tuesday of the month. And the first one is next week on Tuesday. So meet me on Facebook Live. February the 7th at 1 p.m. And I'm going to start with our free embroidery tool shed. Now, I know a lot of you guys, I just saw your names pop up and I recognize you from our user group, which I love that I recognize your names, but you probably have uh, several pieces of Dime software. So don't be afraid to join us if you don't have that piece of software or for this very first one, which actually uses our free embroidery software, because the things I'm going to show you also apply to the pieces of software that you own. Um, all of the things in this free embroidery tool shed work the same way. So you're going to learn things even if you don't own that piece of software because they all work the same. So I can't wait to see you. And I know Eileen will be excited to be back with you next week on Thursday. So until we have another Facebook Live, um, either software success or between friends, uh, we're going to say bye for now. Thank you guys for being here. I really enjoyed the time with you.